It's the masses. We have no regard for the masses. Satanism is a religion for the elite. It is a religion for leaders. It's a religion for competent people. It's not a religion for anyone who wants to be a Satanist. Satanism is a religion for the elite. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan are in New York City this morning, and yesterday the couple toured the World Trade Center site, including the observatory at One World Trade and the September 11th Memorial. It's all part of a visit that includes this weekend's Global Citizen Festival. Global Citizen Live from New York. They're in town for Global Citizen Live, a 24-hour charity concert in New York Central Park and more than eight other major cities. It's a call for unity, for global access to COVID vaccines, and to fight climate change and world hunger with the help of political leaders and artists, including Billie Eilish, Ed Sheeran, and her. Back in May, Harry and Meghan were campaign chairs for the organization's Vax Live, another concert aimed at pandemic recovery. As long as nations struggle with COVID-19, we all struggle with it. Guys, we have what we need to vaccinate the world. Every single person on this planet has a fundamental right to get this vaccine. When we start making decisions through that lens, where every single person deserves equal access to the vaccine, then we can achieve what is needed together for all of us. The head of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Francis, says he doesn't understand why some people are so hesitant to get the vaccine. In an interview, the pontiff said humanity has a history of friendships with vaccines. This comes as more governments begin to mandate the vaccine for more workers. Pope says there has to be a serene discussion to help those resisting the life-saving shots. Our fellow Americans. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. This is not about freedom or personal choice. To protect the health system, we've got everybody locked down. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. You're making the wrong choice. And for safety's sake, and for the back to that point about how much work our nurses have to do, as this becomes absolutely a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we open everything up, it's not going to be safe for people who are not vaccinated to be roaming around the place, spreading the virus. We have no regard for the masses. Satanism is a religion for the elite. It is a religion for leaders. My message to unvaccinated Americans is this. What more is there to wait for? What more do you need to see? We've made vaccinations free, safe and convenient. The vaccine is FDA approved. Over two 100 million Americans have gotten at least one shot. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin. Satanism is not, like Christianity, a way of gathering sheep together in one place. We feel that the best way to change the world into a satanic arena is by having strong individuals in different areas do their own individual work. First, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Maybe it is a greater evil, when all is said and done, to keep millions of people alive who are not ever going to be productive, who are going to drain all of our resources and create a stagnant world. And what the developing world does not need is more children. Hmm. And I think that was the biggest aha to Bill and me when we got into this work, is we asked ourselves, of course, the same hard-nosed question you'd ask, which is, if you get into this work and you start to save these children, will women just keep overpopulating the world? 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 If you look at the animal kingdom, how is the animal kingdom able 
to survive. There, there is no, no such thing as homeless. Back to social Darwinism again. In the animal kingdom, you preserve what is strong. Well, hang on. You give more food to the stronger animal. Until A strong animal does not spend all of their energy and time on Earth helping every weak animal. You help those in your own pack, in your own tribe, those who are like you, and those who are not like you and who are not contributing to you, you do not have a responsibility to. If you want Nic on Nicholas, simpler that terms, you can, you can say that we are of different species. You can say that we are of different species. The masses. We have no regard for the masses. Satanism is a religion for the elite. We're going to get this done. Why is it it doesn't matter when. It doesn't matter whether it's in six minutes, six days, or six weeks. We're going to get it done. Six minutes, six days, or six weeks. Six minutes, six days, or six weeks. Six minutes, six days, or six weeks. We're going to get it done. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You're going to have to do battle with the devil. As a Christian, there are going to be times whenever we're going to have to confront the reality that the devil is real and he conspires against us. The Bible says the thief cometh not but for to kill and to steal and to destroy. And the Bible talks about being fit for the battle and having a mindset and, and, and being ready to fight and ready to battle. It's not just the physical awareness, but it's the mental awareness. It's having your mind right and being ready for the battle. And we have to understand that as Christians, there's going to come days in our life where we're going to have to battle with Satan. We're going to have to deal with the devil. you find yourself here in Revelation chapter 1, this is a very powerful chapter, an introduction to God revealing what will happen, the end times, uh, what the culmination of some of the events and the end of the world will look like. And in chapter 1, we see many uh, things describing the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an introduction to the fact that He is God, that He was the first begotten from the dead, that He is the one that will be, that is alive forevermore. He has the keys of hell and of death. He has the ability to forgive your sins. There are so many great signs here in Revelation chapter 1. And in verse number 6, I want you to see this. He says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He's saying here that Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests. Now, a king is at a different level, aren't they? A king has a greater authority than a servant or someone else. And I want to talk about the Christian exemption against unholy or ungodly things. Listen, we are saints in the Spirit. Now that we're saved, we are a dis different class citizen. Yea, we are citizens of the Most High God. We're citizens of heaven. We have a different country. And last week I talked about the satanic stab. The satanic stab that they want to mandate across on everybody. And I call it that for the sake, uh, 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 obviously, if I you know, call it what it is, YouTube will shut it down and you, you can't say anything. You're not allowed to talk about that. Even if it's the truth or a fact, they want to silence you. And listen, this is obviously a ploy of the devil. Well, what is in that shot is a witch's brew. It is science falsely so called. It's fake science based on fake news and and I stand strong on what the Bible says that your body is the temple and you should not defile God's temple and if you defile your body the temple of God that God may destroy your body if you put unclean things in your body it will destroy your body that's a fact 
We as Christians were called kings and priests. We have a different level of authority. We answer to God for what we do. And therefore, when it comes to certain ungodly things in this world, we have an exemption. Through the cross of Christ, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're sealed unto the day of redemption. We have that Holy Spirit of promise inside of us, and He's there until the day of redemption to reveal truth to us and to, and to wake us up what we ought to do. And because we are the temple of God, we are at a different level. And I'm not trying to say, oh, we're Christians, we're up here, and oh, you dirty sinners are down there. No, listen, we are still sinners in the flesh, yet we are saints in the Spirit. We're saved in our soul forever, and now it's our job to do our best to live for Christ while we're here. And to do that, we need to abstain from pollutions and not touch the unclean thing. We need to be separate from the world. These concepts are very important. Understand that, uh, that God watches over us, just like he watched over Jesus, and he protects us. It doesn't matter how strong the conspiracy is. It doesn't matter how great the attack of Satan is or how much he wants you. The Bible said, Jesus said to Peter, he said, Simon Peter, he said, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. That word desired means he's asked for you. It means this, the Bible says that Satan walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for weakness. He's looking for people that are without faith. Why? Because it's our faith that emboldens us and prepares us for the attack and, and prepares us to fight and stand against the devil. Having done all to stand, stand therefore with your loins girded, the Bible says, and, and uh, to be ready to stand in the evil day. There will be evil days and we need to be ready for those days. And Say police, public order warning. You have previously been directed to leave. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. 
Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. in some other tell me is there life in the Hindu God is there life in a talisman that I wear around my neck can man give life can a religion give life is there life in any other you can have peace tonight if you'll trust Jesus you can have assurance in the storm if you'll trust Jesus. You can have help from God, but you won't get help from God apart from the name of Jesus. You either believe in Him or you don't believe in Him. You either trust Him or you don't. There's no in-between. Can I tell you it's not Jesus plus anything you've done to get to heaven? You say, well, I'm relying on Jesus and my job. You know what? You might lose your job tomorrow, but Jesus won't leave you. You say, I'm, I'm relying on Jesus and my doctor. You might, hey, your doctor might fail you. Someday he'll say, there's nothing I can do for you. But our strength and our hope is in Jesus and Jesus alone. When, when, when he's done with me, when his, my time on this earth is done, and I'm no longer left here to be an ambassador for Jesus, which is the only reason I'm here, and the only reason you're here is to be an ambassador for Jesus, is to tell people about him, to lift up his lovely name, and remind this old sin-cursed world about Jesus. The only reason we're here is to fight the good fight of faith and lift up the banner of the cross and tell people about Jesus. When he's done with us here, we're going home to heaven to be with him. Our time is short here. Any one of us could die this week. It's a fact. Any one of us could be taken from, uh, you're not going to believe what happened. And you're gone. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. Now he freely gives eternal life as a gift to all who simply believe on him for it. John 3.36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Bob makes it very clear, we deserve to go to hell. And we can't get to heaven on our own, so that's why we have to simply believe on Jesus to take us to heaven, and he gives us eternal life the moment we believe. Now, if you keep, if you keep rejecting this gospel message, the good news, you will die in your sins, according to uh, John chapter uh, 8, and you'll go to hell. So that's my message. Believe the gospel or go to hell. It's not about turning from sins or any of that. It's about what, what you believe. You either believe or you don't. You know, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You believe on the Son, you got everlasting life, period. You're going to heaven. You don't believe on the Son, you're still condemned. You can always believe in, in, in a later time when you realize how bad of a sinner you are and that you need God's grace. But you might as well just believe it now. You know, today is the day of salvation. Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. So that's all I have. Believe on Jesus Christ for eternal life or just keep rejecting it and end up in hell. It's your choice. Thank you and we are off.